Hi, I'm Michael Rainville, and with uh, my ace cameraman, Hamill, we're going to show you a great celebration here today in North and Northeast. Thanks to Hennepin County and the City of Minneapolis for their powerful work on this bridge. being able to cross the Mississippi River and Lowry once again. Commissioner Mike Opat, uh, Chairman of the Board of Hennepin County, what a great day for uh, not only the citizens of North and Northeast, but Hennepin County as well. Oh, it is a great day, and it's a beautiful day too, which makes it nice. It could have been snowing, but it's not. It's sunny, and yeah, we're here to, to uh, just celebrate the fact that we, we built a bridge, reopened it, took out a bad bridge, put in a good one, and it's a beautiful one too. And that's the county's role. They're, they're an economic development branch. Well, we are. I mean, we do deliver human services and recycling and roads and libraries and corrections. We do a lot of things, but, but county roads are one of them and public works projects are, are some of them. And we've been uh, fortunate enough to, uh, to keep our, our infrastructure good and, and invest and make it even better in some cases. So things like the Hennepin Avenue Bridge, uh, the 62 Crosstown was a county project years ago to build that Mendota Bridge. Yeah, years ago, I think we've been involved in some huge ones. And you mentioned the Hennepin Avenue Bridge. Crosstown was once a, 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 just a county road, and then it became so busy that the, uh, the state took it over. We've done other ones. We've swapped roads with the states when they get busy after we've built them. This bridge, other bridges that cross the river uh, are part of it. We've helped, of course, with Target Field and, and got that project going. So, yeah, we are involved in infrastructure. And Hennepin County is excellent with cooperating with the city and other government agencies like the state and the federal government to build bridges and to help the citizens? Well, our, our jurisdictions all overlap. So especially when you get into roads and bigger infrastructure projects where they serve not only one city or not only one county, then you have to work together. And I think, you know, part of what we do pretty well is we don't always agree on everything, but we figure out a way to sit down and work it through. And either we agree to disagree or more often, much more often, we agree to agree and just negotiate. And it's just like anybody does in their families or in their businesses. And uh, this project is an example of that. Another example of Hennepin County near and dear to my heart is, is the Humboldt Avenue Greenway, which has had some uh, years behind it now, but still is a, a real model for urban redevelopment. Well, thank you for mentioning that. That's a that's a uh, one of the first projects I was involved in, and I felt strongly about it at the time. And it is. It was a, a place where we took out some obsolete housing put in uh, move up housing for people who were looking for a third bedroom or an attached garage and instead of going to the suburbs they would have that option in the city and that project has, has worked well it's kind of hit uh, a bad time in the market a little bit now like all housing has but it's really going to be a, it's it's sustainable it'll keep those neighborhoods uh, Lynn Bohannon and, and, and such of a Shingle Creek vital for years to come. And Mike, I got to ask you, so uh, you have the Lowry Bridge, of course, which is very important, but you have Lowry Avenue, which is uh, a great east-west street. Uh, uh, Ex-Commissioner Stingline always talks about what a connector that is from North Memorial Hospital all the way to San Anthony Village. Right. How did the county decide to redevelop that street? Well, we looked uh, years ago, it actually came up, it came after the Humboldt Greenway, where we were looking at a new philosophy for public works projects, and it goes back to the mid-90s when we began Hennepin Community Works and we were uh, looking at how can we use our roads as tools for redevelopment and tools to uh, both beautify and carry traffic at the same time. Lowry had a lot of, if you remember, Mike, back in the, uh, the early 2000s and late, in late 90s, a lot of dilapidated uh, properties there. The road was in bad shape. It was, it was bad for pedestrians. So we began that project and kept working uh, east. And then, and lo and behold, the bridge failed. So now we have the bridge. So it's been a steady progression. And I think it's, uh, it's a much better avenue now. And, and, and will be even better in the years to come. So again, uh, while the county is known for its social service delivery, this economic development and this commerce, this is a bridge of commerce. 
It is. It's uh, not only 16,000 cars a day, but but also it's a national truck route. So heavy trucks can go over this bridge. And so, yeah, commerce happens over this bridge all the time, and commerce is going to happen back in the neighborhoods now that it's open. Well, thanks so much. It's a great day. Good. Thanks, Mike. Okay. I want to thank my great colleague, Congressman Ellison, for being here. Yeah. These wonderful county commissioners, without them, it wouldn't have been done. Um, you're a little taller than me. Okay, you did. You, do you want me to do the joke again? No. Um, Senator Klobuchar, what a great day here in Minneapolis. You know, thank you so much for the help on the bridge. And tell us about uh, the level of cooperation that the federal government gives to the county and to the states. Well, this is a great example. Uh, the federal government, we stood in, Keith and I got involved in this early on, but uh, once we found out this bridge had to be replaced, it was structurally deficient. We already saw just a few miles away what happens uh, when a bridge isn't safe, uh, when we had a bridge fall down in the middle of America. So we worked uh, with the state and the county. The state and county took a major lead on this bridge and were able to get the funding and get it done. And when they were replaced it. They didn't replace it with an ugly bridge. They replaced it with a beautiful bridge that will be here forever. You know, and thank you for saying that. Uh, the other night I drove by for the first time and I had to pick up my phone and call Mark Stingline <laughs> and say thank you. It looks like a bridge that you'd see in uh, Melbourne, Australia yeah. or Barcelona. It's exactly. wonderful. Well, that's because that's the future for North and Northeast Minneapolis. We're very excited. I joke that there's an old movie called North by Northwest. Mm -hmm. Well, this is going to be the new movie, North to Northeast. Oh, uh, great. Thank you so okay. much, Jamie. Thank Good you. to see you again. noise that it made, all the all the uh, excitement of driving across it, and you'd look down and you could see the river, remember that? I mean, it's just, it's an, it was an amazing bridge. Council President Barbara Johnson, it's a bright sunny day here in North and Northeast Minneapolis, but what a showcase of cooperation between governments. You know, these days, Michael, nothing gets done unless people work together, and almost every project that is substantial, like this project, requires levels of government to work together. And and we have good relationships with our folks at the federal, state, oh my goodness, we're oh, having yeah, a flyover. Yeah. It's really beautiful, it's really beautiful. So uh, the fact that we can work together to get something done is so important for the community. And uh, Commissioner Opat talked about how happy the county was to have the city's involvement and then the state and federal governments came in and helped. Well, and, and that's what it took because this was a very expensive project and it, it, the quality shows through. It's a innovative design. It's beautiful. There isn't another one that looks like this bridge uh, in our area. And, you know, I give the county so much credit for standing up and saying... I feel like we're being uh, in a World War II movie. Oh, look at the big jet up there, too. Uh, in Commissioner Opath's remarks, he talked about how uh, actually happy the, the county was to help the city and, and get the involvement of federal and, and state governments. Well, that's really what it takes when you have a very innovative design like this. This was a very expensive project, and so we, we needed to have everybody working together and pulling and putting funding in from different sources. And a little bit later uh, today, uh, we're going to have a, a dedication uh, led by the city of a city public works uh, worker who actually gave up his life working on the bridge many years ago. You know, in 1956, a uh, city public works employee, Anton Urbanak, was killed working on the Lowry Bridge. And, you know, the Lowry Bridge had many iterations. It was a very old bridge. It was being redecked. And uh, he fell, slipped, fell. Uh, hit his head and then fell into the water and several of his fellow employees jumped in the water to try and save him but they were unable to and it you know we always uh, are aware that uh, our public safety jobs are dangerous you know our firemen and our policemen put their lives on the line all the time 
But public works work is very, very dangerous as well. And uh, we just really want to remember him. He was a North Sider. His family grew up in North Minneapolis then after his death. And so we want to honor him. And so we have a small plaque down at the entrance to the uh, uh, Lowry Bridge at the Second Street side. And I ran into his, his daughter. His daughter Kathy used to live by me, but his daughter Kathy, Debbie, and his son would be here. And they're, yes. they're so proud that yes. their father is being honored for yes. his hard work. And as you say, the hard work of all public works. Well, you know, these folks are, uh, are, are uh, everyday folks working on what the city's main job is, which is infrastructure. And they take care of our streets, they take care of our bridges, and so they're our first line uh, of uh, workers out there. So it's really a pleasure to be able to remember him today. And the reason that I knew about him is my husband went to school with uh, his son. And so every time we would drive over the Lowry Bridge, my husband would say to me, Tony Urbanak's dad got killed working on the Lowry Bridge. And so I thought, you know, as long as we're building this brand new beautiful bridge, there has to be some place on that bridge that we can remember him. And uh, so it was really great that Commissioner Stingline worked with me to be able to make that happen. First of all, when you think, you saw that old 1905 car drive across this bridge. The original bridge was built in 1905. And to think, you know, to have the foresight to build a bridge for little vehicles like that to drive across and as we progress to today. And in 1956, one of our own lost his life working on this bridge. Those years I was born. Those years I was born. So it, it's a certain significance to all of us. But, you know, I think as, as Council Member Covenroy and, and Council Member Johnson said, you know, these women and men, those are the ones that when you when it's snowing outside and they're driving the snow plows or working up on the girders and boy, who's got to do that job? Well, they're the ones that have to do it. So it's incumbent on us to be here to remember those folks. I'm darn proud to have this plaque on this bridge. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. You know, the county built this bridge. The bridge belongs to all of us. Now. It's a piece of city infrastructure. When I used to look at it from the office downtown, I'd see those arches coming up. And it just, I just, I'm just so proud like all of us are. You know, I'm glad the county was able to get it done, but now it belongs to the city. It belongs to all of us in the city. Uh, Barbara, it seems like we've gone through a really tough time here in America and in the city of Minneapolis, the, but the economy is slowly getting better. I've noticed that the city is just smarter and works more efficiently. Is, is that true? Well, we uh, believe so. You know, we're down about a thousand employees from what we were uh, in uh, the beginning of uh, 2004. So we've gradually, mainly through attrition, uh, downsized our workforce. and tried to do things smarter and of course computer technology all the improvements that happen with new materials research that's going on you know lets us do our work more efficiently uh, efficiently our police department targets hot spots which they can because of cameras and computer analysis of what's going on and and it just has allowed us to do uh, we think a good job with fewer fewer folks so great changes you've seen since when you started office uh, to this point in time. Oh my goodness, yes. You know, uh, so much more automation of services, our parking ramps. Uh, we have the city has a great big parking system and, you know, almost all of our ramps are fully automated now, uh, which saves money. And, uh, you know, our new parking meters are bringing in more revenue. And so we, we try to take advantage of the technology and uh, uh, do our uh, work in smart ways that save money. Great. Thank you, Barbara. Well, this is truly a great day and a long time of coming. And there's so many people that need thanking. First and foremost, I want to thank the people of North and Northeast Minneapolis for all their patience over the years getting this bridge done. Mark, we're going to talk about how important it is for the governments to cooperate. But first, I have to thank you for the beauty of that bridge. I called you the other night. And honest to gosh, this is something you'd see in Barcelona or Melbourne. This is wonderful. Michael, isn't it exciting? You know, ever since the arches went up, people are really starting to take notice because it has been closed for a long time. And I just really want to apologize to the citizens and the businesses for the delay in getting it open. But, you know, we had to implode the old one and get it out of the water. And we're working around the Corps of Engineers. And we didn't have as big a magnifying glass as the 35W bridge had. So we had to kind of piece it together. And, you know, it's a big project. Hennepin's a big county. But we work together with the city of Minneapolis, the 
the park board, the federal government, the state to make this thing possible. The county was probably the lead on it, but it's a county road, it's a county bridge, but boy, didn't it turn out great. It did, and what you're providing is a whole level, higher level of hope, a higher standard of opportunities for the citizens of North and Northeast. This is a bridge of commerce above all else. Well, you know, I had a fellow who owns a business on the west side, right that butts right up by the bridge, and he was always kind of critical, you know, of why you're building the bridge. Why is it going to be so fancy? I saw him today. He hugged me. He said, I can't thank you enough. What this is going to do to my property values is immense. It's enormous. This is absolutely a landmark for this part of the city. And early on in your uh, tenure as a county commissioner, you realized that the county had to step in and help revitalize North and Northeast. And that your idea was to use Lowry as that. How did that all come about? Well, you know, Lowry Avenue is one of the few east-west connectors on this side of downtown. If you think about it, Lowry connects both boundaries of the city from over by North Memorial Hospital in Robbinsdale all the way to St. Anthony Village up on Stinson Boulevard. So it's a natural connector to really revitalize and name as a community works project for the county to bring in other agencies of government kind of like a huge urban renewal that the feds used to do in the 60s and you're a a man of your word and you said this is a three-part project you're going to go uh, from North Memorial to the river, you're going to rebuild the bridge, and then number three is is the march river east. up. We're going to march east, and you know, with the, the nice thing, we're able to do the whole project all the way to Second Street. Because remember the old berm that held up the old bridge and you know the approach? It's all bridge now, so there can be trails underneath on the on the west side of the river that there was impossible before because we had this ancient old berm there. That's gone, Michael. It's like a whole other bridge over there. It's a fantastic amenity now to both sides of the river. Well, Mark, thanks so much for your help. And again, every time I go by that bridge and I see the beauty, I'm going to think about the guts that you had to make it happen. So thank you. Michael, you're very kind. You know, my daughter used to call the old bridge the singing bridge because it was an open, great design. She calls the new one the dancing bridge. All right. Well, let's dance together over here. (laughs) Thanks for your help, Mark. Oh, it looks like we got one person made it all the way around the boat. I'll go to Big Road of Applause for those guys. Tom Sywick, your family has been on the east side for many years, and uh, as a, a businessman, you must really appreciate how this bridge has come up. Yeah, this bridge has been a fabulous uh, event that's been uh, coming along for a couple years now. We're happy to be involved in this event. We had free coffee and donuts here with River Liquor. Our business is right down the street, and being right at the foot of the Lowry Bridge, it makes a huge impact on our business. The convenience and the commerce of people going back and forth across the river is fabulous. And how long has Cywick Lumber been in Northeast Minneapolis here? Uh, Next year, 2013, will be our 80th year. Wow. Yeah, long time. Tom, it must have been tough here with that bridge closed four years. Yeah, it was a difficult thing. Um, Our business, along with the local businesses like River Liquor and all along Laurie and Marshall and everywhere, it's been a tough situation, but we get along and we support each other and uh, we've we've survived. A lot of people talk about the bridge and maybe it's a little too extravagant for this part of town. What's your feelings on that? Well, we're in Northeast Minneapolis. This is the Arts District. I mean, we need a marquee bridge that's going to say a lot, say, Welcome to Northeast, and that's what we wanted, and that's that's what we got. Northeast is known for its volunteerism and, and the great things how people help each other. You're quite involved with the Exchange Club. What are some of the programs the Exchange Club does to help? Exchange Club does a lot of volunteering in the neighborhood. We do things with Meals on Wheels, and we help out at bell ringing time. We do a lot of uh, support with the youth. 
youth and child abuse prevention is our biggest focus focus and we do fundraising for those efforts. If people want to get involved with the East Side Exchange Club, is there a number they could call at or a contact? Yeah, I'm, I'm a good contact for the Exchange Club. I've been a, a member for over 20 years. I've been president three times and we got a great group of folks, uh, over 40 members that are from all over Northeast. You can call my number at the Cybic Lumber, 612-781-3333. It'll be a good way to get a hold of an Exchange Club event that's going on soon. Thanks, Tom. All right, thanks, Tom. Yeah. Bill Neuschwanger, uh, inventor of the Segway Tours here along the river in Minneapolis and another uh, great entrepreneur on the east side. Yeah. How much do you depend on government to help you with your business? Well, you know, I would say that's an absolute pinnacle. I mean, every minute of our tour is touching something that's part of an amenity of this city. We love the city and these bridges are pinnacle to what we do for the Segway Tour in downtown Minneapolis. I mean, we're crossing them at least a couple of times on each of the tours. And of course, the Stone Arch Bridge, everybody knows of it as an amenity and it's a pedestrian bridge. But these other bridges that we have along the river here have been absolutely uh, pinnacle to our business for people coming to Northeast Minneapolis and also for the fact that when we are unable to use one of these bridges, our city is smart enough to have redundant infrastructure. So the Broadway Bridge has been great with when the Plymouth Avenue bridge is closed and now we will be doing tours across the Lowry Bridge. So this is wonderful to have these additional amenities and you know this is all the stuff that we hope good government does. Are you going to go across the Lowry Avenue Bridge at night? I think it should happen, don't you think? It's supposed to be a really pretty sight. <laughs> well, I, 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 my story on the Lowry Bridge is that there's a bridge you would see in Barcelona or Melbourne, Australia. It is absolutely beautiful at night. The first time I saw it, I had to call up Mark Singline and oh. tell him what a great job you did. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, everybody is so happy about this, and this is just one of these things that uh, you know we all will share for a really long time. This is going to be here for the next 100 years like we like, we like to see. <laughs> <laughs> Look out. Look out. Nice. You know, it's been a long time of coming, and we all liked our old Lowry Bridge. And the community involvement and the community meetings we had to select a new bridge. If we liked the old bridge, we're going to love this one. This one's going to be truly magnificent, and it is magnificent, a beauty to look at and stand for the test of time for a long time. If the old one stood for 100 years, this one will be here for 1,000 years. I also want to thank my fellow commissioners, because without their votes, this couldn't have happened. You know, it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of time for the county to work on a huge project like this. In addition to the various county staff, from our lead engineers, I see Deb Risk is here, and Jim Group, and all the staff who worked on it. Uh, Administrator Johnson's here, and Deputy Administrator Up. Thank you for all the patience and the time that we put into this. And in addition to that, just let's really enjoy the day. I mean, what you see here is magnificent. There are things you don't see. There are things like a water retention tank behind us over here that's going to collect acres of rainwater from northeast Minneapolis and uh, and cleanse, cleanse it before it goes into the river. Yeah. yeah. So as you know, now I'm at the downtown council, but the river is an incredibly important part of our plan, and this is an incredibly important part of that. So as we add this bookend to the Hennepin Avenue suspension bridge. Let's just celebrate it today in a big way. And how often do I get to, to speak before a U.S. Senator? Michael, <laughs> thank you very much. Great. Oh. I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of it. And I want you to know that I was there with Amy that day when we were standing on the banks of the Mississippi just a few miles that way. And, uh, you know, our hearts were heavy. And Amy did say, bridges should not fall down in America. And that moment sparked a commitment for us to rebuild our country. And I'm so proud that this bridge is one symbol, one example of how we're going to do that. And we got to stick together because if we build bridges like this one all over this nation, we will put America back to work. We will improve the productivity of our country. And we will make this country the greatest beyond the imagination of the people who founded it. And I'm telling you right now, most of the infrastructure we drive on these days was made by our grandparents. We have a responsibility to the next generation to build bridges like this one. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, hi, uh, my name is Kevin Reich, and I'm the council member for Ward 1, which is the northeast end of this beautiful bridge that we're celebrating today, the Hennepin County project that uh, has been long awaited. And now that we have it, it's really magnificent. And, and as a council member, we get to work on with our partners at the county on some of the smaller details. It's now integrated into our River First plan. It's also a big part of our bike path uh, initiative. And of course, I got to learn about how you get things done with our now current Senator, Carrie Diedzik, but at the time she was the person who was working behind the scenes so diligently to make sure that the things that we needed as a community to make this an important not just transportation piece but a real piece that connects our communities makes our communities work better and a point of pride. Carrie you did a great job and you really do need to be recognized for the work that you did at that time. Maybe some words and some insights? Well, thank you. It was, it was a fun project to work on. It was a lot of work. It was actually a, a project where the community from both North Minneapolis and Northeast, the businesses in the area, the council members from the area, the state senators and state reps, and at the time Hennepin County, and I was a uh, Hennepin County staff person um, in the commissioner's office at the time, and, and it was a project where we could all come together and work on, and like the council members said, it was part of River First, and so it was just um, an exciting project, and it was, again, tying everybody together, and everybody had a common goal. Um, the bridge was closed closed in 2007 2008 and and it, you know people say oh what's one bridge but that's you know it was about 12,000 cars to 15,000 cars a day and so that's a lot of traffic that had to go through the neighborhoods and into other parts of the neighborhood and on other bridges that were you know we've had this is three different bridges in the area that were closed and now they're all open so we're so excited and, and this is the big one and it's got a lot of bike traffic and hopefully bike traffic in the uh, summer and so this will be an exciting loop um, so yeah, so it was it was exciting, and, and, and there is a lot of work, but I want people to understand that they all think that we're in our own little silos in government, and we do work together, and there's so much in the media today where people don't get along, and government doesn't get along, and everything's deadlocked, and, and it's not. There's a lot of stuff that actually is getting done, and this is a testament to that happening. All right, we ready? Everybody ready? ready. All right. Okay. One, two, three. Bob Margett, owner of River Liquor, we had a great day here on the river celebrating this bridge. And I, I know you've 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 struggled here for the last few years. Uh, what's it been like to be under fire like this? It was a long four and a half years. Um, thanks to good neighbors, friends, our northeast community, our friends from the north side, um, we made it through. And northeast got a bridge they deserved. Uh, it's a beautiful bridge. Now we'll get Laurie Avenue going on northeast side, and things will be really good. Bob, as we wrap up our show today, Tom Sywick had talked about his family being here 80 years and what a great community is that we care about each other in Northeast. We're great friends. It's just a wonderful spot to live. Northeast is a great place. My family's been here 66 years. We have four generations of my family have been here. My son just bought a house this month, two doors down in the neighborhood. Uh, I think Northeast is the best place in town to live. Okay. Life is good, Hamill. <laughs> Thanks.